Okay, so what we're going to do next is ground reference maneuvers. Now the reason why we teach ground reference maneuvers is to teach you how to correct your ground track for wind. Uh, wind obviously, since we have no friction on the wheels, the wind is going to affect us and push us away or, uh, or push us closer to certain things we're trying to do, like a, uh, like a traffic pattern. If we're in the traffic pattern, it might push us too close to the runway or uh, push us away from the runway if we're trying to make a landing. So we, you have to be able to correct for the wind and know what the wind's doing. That's why we teach ground reference maneuvers. We're trying to teach you how to maintain a predetermined ground track. Before we can do any ground reference maneuvers though, I want to teach you about just the basics of maintaining ground track. There's basically two ways that you can maintain a specific ground track. One way is to do something called crabbing. Now just as most of you know when you watch a crab walk, it's walking, it's facing one direction but walking in a straight line to another direction. Now that's basically effectively crabbing. Crabbing means that we are weather veining into the wind but maintaining a constant ground track uh, uh, without uh, changing headings but facing another direction. To demonstrate this, I'm going to fly perpendicular to the wind over a road and show you what happens if I try to align the longitudinal tunnel axis with a straight line. Now obviously I'm not pushing any rudder when I'm trying to al uh, align the longitudinal tunnel axis, I'm just trying to do it with just the ailerons. So here's a straight road off to our right wing. All right, 1,000 feet here. So what I'm going to do is fly right over the road. A long straight road perpendicular to the wind. Now this is not one of the maneuvers you'll do, I'm just going to show you the basics of crabbing. What I'll do is I'll try to align the longitudinal tunnel axis, longitudinal axis with the road. And what you'll notice is that I slowly are drifting to the right of the road. Even though I'm maintaining a constant heading, I'm not over the road anymore. I'm drifting to the right. If I go back over the road, turn to the left here, what I can try and do is use trial and error. I, I, I put an intercept heading back to the road and take about half of it out. And you'll notice that now I am staying over the road even though I'm facing about 10 degrees off to the left of the nose. But this is uh, 10 degrees off to the left of the road, sorry. And uh, this is what's cra what, what it means to crab. So if I'm trying to maintain a straight line over the ground, I'll have to crab by facing the aircraft into the wind slightly. And you'll notice that even though the longitudinal axis is not aligned with the road, I'm still maintaining a straight line. That's one way we can correct for wind. You'll use this uh, type of uh, technique in, uh, when you do something called the rectangular course. You'll also use it in the traffic pattern to make sure that you maintain a constant ground track over the uh, ground while you maintain in the, constant, in the traffic pattern to stay the same distance away from the runway. That's one way to maintain a constant ground track. The other way to do it is if we're turning, uh, we can adjust the bank angle to stay over certain areas over the ground if we are turning. To show you the effects of uh, wind at bank angle, I'm going to demonstrate something called a wind drift circle. Now a wind drift circle is also something that you can use to determine the direction of the wind uh, prior to beginning any ground reference uh, maneuver. So the easiest way to do this is uh, we're going to take a reference over the ground. We're going to fly over it and as, as we soon as we fly over it, we're going to inc uh, go into a 30 degree bank and I'm going to do it to the left. And you're going to hold the bank at 30 degrees and see if you land up at the same point, wings level, facing the same direction when you get back over your reference. If you don't, depending on where you are in relation to the visual reference on the ground, that'll tell you where the wind's coming from and also give you an indication of how fast the wind is. I'm going to turn back to the right here, and if you look straight ahead, uh, about to your uh, 12, 11, 1 o'clock to 12 o'clock now, there's here a red barn right in front of us. That's my visual reference. I'm going to fly right over that red barn. When I get over it, like I said, increase the bank to 30 degrees. 
just going to hold the bank until I get back to the same heading. So what I'll do is I'll bug my heading. I'll pick a visual reference straight ahead uh, in front of the, ahead of the uh, uh, barn to make sure that I get back to the same heading when I roll out. And obviously looking out for traffic the entire time as we're doing this. Alright. So I'm right over the barn now, so what I'll do is clear the left wing, slowly and uh, smoothly roll in to a 30 degree bank, and hold the bank constant until you get back to the same heading you started off at. The key here is to maintain that 30 degree bank, do not change it. Again, this is called a wind drift circle. There's the red barn, off, if you look uh, up to your left uh, side over here, you actually see the red barn and we're not over it anymore. So we definitely know there's a, a wind. Now once I roll out on my heading, I start off at, right here, well notice that I'm actually northeast of my barn that I chose, which means if I am northeast of the barn, I got blown towards the northeast, which means I have a southwesterly wind. So, right from that, from what I know now, if I do ground reference maneuvers, I know I have a southwesterly wind. So I'll find references that are uh, or enter on a southwesterly downwind um, when I conduct my maneuvers. That's the winter circle. Now, what I can do is if I go back over the uh, the winter circle, but in this case, adjust the bank so that I get right back over my barn when I roll out on the heading I start off at, by adjusting the bank, I can uh, account for the for the wind and uh, stay over a specific ground track to get over the barn. How do you adjust for the wind with the banks? Uh, if you have a high ground speed, you would have an increased bank angle. If you have low ground speed, you would decrease the bank angle to adjust for the wind. Uh, so when you're doing things like a maneuver like turns around a point, You'll be varying your banks from shallow banks to steep banks. Now you'll notice how I'm not giving you any numbers on what is a shallow bank, what is a steep bank, what is a medium bank, because it actually depends on the strength of the wind. Your shallow bank could be something like uh, 20 degrees, 25 degrees, and your steep bank be 30 degrees. On really windy days when the winds are strong, your shallow bank could be straight and level actually, and your steep bank be 30 degrees. So there is no dry uh, uh, cut number it's what you, you just have to see what the aircraft is doing and if you're drifting too close or too far away from the point. While we're on the discussion of turns around a point, let's do uh, turns around a point. So a couple of things we have to think about is one, when we're picking the reference, it has to be in a position or a field where we can make an emergency approach and landing in case our engine does fail. Uh, now this hasn't, uh, knock on wood, happened at all, but uh, we want to just and for the worst case scenario. And we don't have, a, have enough altitude to uh, do much besides just land the airplane. So where that red barn was, we had a big fields around there and we'll use the same field. Now the red barn was very easily identifiable and uh, very easy to use. What we're gonna do with S uh, turns around a point is we're gonna try and maintain a constant radius around our barn. So when we enter, we're going to enter on the downwind, which would be our highest ground speed, which means that we're going to have to go into the steepest bank, which we'll, we'll put at 30 degrees today, and we also have a high rate of roll to get into the 30 degrees of bank. We're going to enter the maneuver about half, uh, we want the, the uh, barn about a quarter way to halfway up the wing strut. Uh, and what that allows us to do is when we go into our steep bank, it allows us to not cover up uh, the point with a high wing. Right here, if you can see off to your left hand side, we've got the barn coming up. And I've got 1,000 feet and 100 knots. I'll bug the heading, so I'm entering on the downwind. 
We do have about a 10 knot wind, so we'll lift up to adjust our banks. And like I said, just look if you're drifting or uh, drifting far away or drifting too close. If you're drifting away, increase the bank. If you're drifting too close, decrease the bank. All right. So uh, a beam up point, we're going to roll into our steep bank, coordinated left aileron, left rudder, looking at our horizon. And there's about 30 degrees. So there's our point off to our left-hand side, and at the window. As I'm going into the crosswind, I'm slowly going to start shallowing out the bank. Not a lot, I'm just, but uh, how much? Just look at the point and see if you're drifting away or closer. Now I'm going to the upwind, and this will require the shallowest bank because the wind is going to try and push me uh, closer to my point. Right now, about a 10 knot wind, you'll notice that my shallow bank is about 20 degrees, but again, hard, not hard numbers, just look at your point. We're looking out for traffic as we do this to make sure we're at 1,000 feet, adjusting power as we need to, to maintain 100 knots. Here's my crosswind, which this will actually start pushing me towards my field, so I need to shallow out the bank. But I'm going to start entering on the downwind here now, so I'll have to increase my bank angle back to 30 degrees. Still looking at our point, looking out ahead of our, uh, for the for the horizon, looking for traffic. We'll do two turns around the the visual reference, the red barn. The first turn will set the radius. The second turn will show that we can maintain the radius. Again, adjusting bank as needed to maintain your point. If I'm drifting closer, shallow out the bank. If I'm drifting too far away, increase the bank. a crosswind so I'm getting pushed towards my point so I'll, uh, I'll shut out the bank slightly increase about five uh, five to ten degrees I'm entering back onto the downwind so start increasing the bank and at no point do you want to cover up the the visual reference with your wing I'm starting to increase my out so I'll pitch down slightly about a quarter inch below the horizon and exit on the heading you started off at. That'll be your turns around a point, maintaining a constant radius around uh, a specific uh, point on the ground while maintaining a thousand feet AGL uh, and uh, 100 knots for us. That's your turns around the point.